you watched an escalation of the use of force against this young man as he was begging and pleading for his life. It's hard to view that footage and reconcile what you see and hear with characterizations of Elijah McLean as having resisted. Everybody wanted the same thing, to be useful to this commission, to this panel, and to be able to use our expertise to help the city of Aurora and the people of, uh, of Aurora uh, come to understand what had happened on that fateful night. Elijah McLean was a 23-year-old black man living in Aurora, Colorado. He was on his way to the gas station and someone called 911 to report seeing someone suspicious. Three police officers responded to the scene and one of the officers got out of his car, told Mr. McLean to stop. Mr. McLean continued to walk and eight seconds after that officer left his car, he put his hands on Mr. McLean and started a course of events where violence was used against Mr. McLean in an unrelenting way for the next 18 minutes until he went into medical crisis from which he never recovered. The city police department investigated the events and found that police had acted within policy in their encounter with Elijah. In uh, summer of 2020, you have protests surrounding the, the death of, of George Floyd, uh, Breonna Taylor, and with that came, you know, a reemergence of discussions about what happened to Elijah McLean. There was a, a call by the people of Aurora, the city of Aurora, to, uh, to revisit and to investigate this and to do so in an independent and uh, objective way. The city commission uh, heeded that call from the citizens and put together this uh, panel of independent experts. It was not the commission, the panel's task to determine who was right or who was wrong, but to present the facts. To do this project right was gonna take thousands of hours and reach out to Kevin to see if I could get some additional pro bono support in order to put this project together. We were uh, asked to be counsel to that independent commission and to provide the legwork, the, the research, uh, the legal uh, support for the work that they were doing. Most of our investigation in this case was watching the body camera video from the officers that were on the scene. In a lot of the video we watched, we couldn't see Elijah. And so one really challenging thing is there is this disconnect between what the officers were saying and what uh, what we were hearing from Elijah. One of the things that, that became apparent in the investigation is that you know from the time that they took Mr. McLean to the ground until the time he was loaded onto the ambulance stretcher, there was always someone on top of them and applying some type of control hold. With regard to the emergency medical team, they administered ketamine basically without having conducted an evaluation of Mr. McLean's status. In our report, we made findings about the police officer's conduct, the conduct of the medical staff and the emergency medical team that arrived there, and then um, of the post-incident investigation. The report determined that the departmental investigations following Elijah McLean's death um, were cursory and summary at best and, and really didn't ask the probing questions that would have held people accountable. Based on all the information in the conglomerate, you know, we could come to the conclusion that at this point and based on constitutional law, there was no authority to stop Mr. McLean. That report prompted a lot of very rapid change, centering and focusing the protocols that guide the medicine that's happening in the pre-hospital environment to really focus on good basic assessment of a patient every time. The uh, public response to the report uh, was uh, uh, overwhelming, uh, in not just in Aurora, not just in Colorado, but throughout the country. You heard from community members, they felt like this is the first time that, that the bright lights had been shined on a problem that they had been experiencing for so long. The same day that the report was issued, the city announced that it will be implementing an independent monitor um, for the police. His mother said in the media that when she read the report, her son was transformed from a perpetrator to a victim. It was important to her 
to know that whatever happened to him and why it happened, it was not because he had been doing something wrong. Everybody who participated in this really just deserves to be honored for both how hard they worked and the personal toll that a project like this takes on them and just a tremendous hats off to that team of lawyers who you, you spent hundreds of hours um, doing a really hard thing and doing it really well.